Hello everyone and welcome back to today's analysis. For this episode, I'm going to analyze none other than Thor Odinson, one of the main protagonists in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. One of the, one of the most iconic Marvel heroes ever created, Thor, or better yet the MCU version of him, is regarded one by far the most iconic version of the character ever created. And in this episode, I'm going to analyze all the information given about him throughout all the films of the MCU to better understand Thor and his journey from a spoiled, self-serving prince to the iconic superhero he has ultimately become. Now with our further ado, let's dive in. Thor Odinson was born on Asgard in the year 964 AD to his father, King Odin, and, Queen, and his mother, Queen Frigga. Growing up, he had a younger brother, only one year younger than him, Loki, that they both have some kind of a sibling rivalry with, but still shared some relative close bond with each other. But even so, because of the fact that Thor was perceived at the time to be the firstborn, he was mostly preferred by Odin and deemed as the true successor to his throne. And by the year 2010, after more than a thousand years of life, Thor was named by Odin as the new true successor to the throne and the crown prince of Asgard. However, at the time of his supposed semi-coronation, the frost giants that Odin was at war with centuries prior invaded Asgard and managed to attack the people, only for it to, them to be defeated in the end. And being angry by this, Thor, along with Loki and his friends, went on Jotunheim, the frost giants' homeworld, in order to attack them, including their king, Lofi. The many culminating Odin taking Thor and the others back on Asgard and heavily punishing him by stripping him of his rank and powers and banishing Thor on Earth, officially to learn to how to be a good person by living among the mortals. And while living on Earth, he befriended a scientist named Jane Foster, as well as with her friends, and living in New Mexico. And despite the that at first he was heavily uninterested and quite arrogant towards all the people around him, he began to slowly but surely fall in love with Jane, and eventually realized how mortals live, and decided to live like one of them. Officially, he began to have a new life for himself. However, problems occur on Asgard, as his father has supposedly died, and Loki, his brother, or better yet, his adoptive brother, Loki Lofison, was succeeded him as the new king of Asgard, only for it to be all a hoax. In reality, Loki, after he found out the truth about his origins that his frost giants adopted and raised by Odin, decided to put his own father in a coma and lie to Thor the whole time, and even after he Thor's friends came on Earth to, sa to save him, Loki sent the destroyer in order to find and kill Thor, in order to prevent anyone from interfering with his plans. Thus, Thor managed to prove himself in the end worthy of the hammer once again, and after gaining back his strength and destroyed the destroyer, he went back on Asgard to confront Loki, a confrontation which led to the bridge being destroyed, and Loki being seemingly lost throughout space and time, and Odin managed to recover, and named Thor his primary successor once again, but only for him to have a missing Jane as the first person that he actually truly loved in his life. But yet, nevertheless, two years later, by 2012, Loki resurfaced back on Earth, this time with the Kitao Receptor, which itself contains the Mind Stone, who desired to conquer the planet for Thanos. Thor arrived, and along with other superheroes such as Iron Man, Captain America, Hulk, Hawkeye, and Black Widow, came together to form the Avengers, managed to defeat Loki and save the Earth officially bring him back on Asgard for judgment, along with the Tesseract, which itself contains the Space Stone, while the Kitao Receptor remained on Earth. And on Asgard, Loki was sentenced to life imprisonment for his crimes of both betrayal against Asgard and for an invasion over Earth. However, this was also quite short-lived, as by 2013, the Dark Elves, the evil species that his grandfather bore, confronted with over 5,000 years ago, came back from hibernation in order to steal the Eater, a powerful substance that contains the reality stone, in order to use it to turn the entire universe into darkness. Thankfully, Thor managed to, uh, to defeat them with the help from Bomb Jane and Loki, who faked his death right in front of Thor, and thus causing him to believe that his own brother died, only for it to be a hoax. Loki used this as an opportunity to overthrow Odin, and finally assume complete leadership over Asgard, and even exile his adoptive father on Earth, while he pre impersonated Odin to all the people of Asgard, and to his own brother. However, problems have arisen once again in 2015, when the rogue AI, Ultron, tried to wipe out the humanity and to turn the entire planet being controlled by machines. Thor alongside with the Avengers came back together in order to prevent this. And in the meantime, new members were added to the team, such as Wanda Maximoff, aka the Scarlet Witch, as well as Vision. 
and meanwhile Thor continue his missions throughout the Nine Realms to bring peace and to make more friends, as well as coming and visiting and being together with Jane Foster. However, by 2017, his entire life was turned upside down, first with the revelation that, that in the past four years, his brother Loki impersonated Odin and rule over Asgard without anyone, even Thor himself knowing, as well as the fact that his their real father Odin died on Earth, and their older sister Hela, the true firstborn, and the goddess of death managed to escape and took over Asgard, as well as attempting to murder them in cold blood, and resulting in both Thor and Loki arriving on Sakharan when they were both enslaved by the Grand Master, and used as their champions. And there Thor met another Asgardian known as Brunhild, one of the Valkyrs that were slaughtered by Hela when she tried to take over Asgard centuries prior, as well as his former co teammate Hulk, who got lost on Sakharan after during their war against Altran. Thankfully for everyone, they managed to escape from there, as well as partially redeeming Loki in the process, who joined the so-called Revengers in order to take Asgard back from Hela and to end her madness once and for all. Thus resulting in Hela being ultimately killed and Surtur destroying Asgard in order to defeat her, but, but at the cost of his own life. And Thor finally ascended as a position as the new king of Asgard and continued to lead his people to prosperity. But tragically, the prosperity was also short-lived as Thanos, in his quest for the Infinity Stones to attack the Asgardians, slaughtered half of the population, including Loki and Heimdall, and injured Thor and Hulk in the process, and took the, te and took the Space Stone from the Tesseract in order to complete the gauntlet, as well as blowing Thor up in order and let him to die in the vacuum of space. Thankfully, he was saved by the Guardians of the Galaxy, and decided to go to forge for himself a new weapon in order to be able to defeat Thanos once and for all. And now, before I go any further, we all should stop and ask ourselves, is Thor good? The reason why I'm asking is simply because you can all understand that Thor, throughout the movies, as at least at the beginning, was somewhat spoiled, self-righteous, overconfident, and arrogant and egotistical from all points of view. However, after he fell in love with Jane Foster and even got to live like normal people, he came to not only appreciate his life and everyone in it, but also to grow up into a better and more morally responsible person in the process, ultimately proving that Thor himself is capable of change. And despite the fact that he is a bit wrathful and even became nihilistic after he lost in the battle to Thanos, Thor is still pretty much a wonderful person only broken by these traumatic experiences he had in his life, ultimately proving that the answer to the question is yes, Thor is genuinely a good person who does care about others around him, including Jane and his teammates, and in the end, they, he, he and he, all of them tragically lost to Thanos, who managed to successfully kill all half of all life in the universe, in order to bring back the balance in the cosmos, resulting in him being hunted down and eventually decapitated by Thor himself, and Thor, sheltered inside in the new Asgard on Earth, and who proved and became an nihilistic and alcoholic fat man who cares very little about you know, what's happening outside his new comfort zone. But five years later in 2023, his life took a new turn when the Avengers discover a way to bring everyone back. Thor took part of it in order to travel into different realities and take the Infinity Stones from them in order to create a new Infinity Gauntlet and bring everyone back. And thankfully they succeeded. But their actions attracted and brought the attention of an alternate version of Thanos, who tried to snap everyone back from existence and to destroy the universe and remake it into his image. Thankfully, they all managed to stop him, and reality, as we know it, was safe, and the Infinity Stones were handed back. And thus the Avengers disbanded, and everyone, including Thor, went on their own ways, with himself joining the Guardians of the Galaxy in the process. And that too was ultimately short-lived, as everyone kind of despised Thor for his great arrogance and overconfidence, as well as rivalry with Peter Quill, and that lasted only one year, as by 2024 a new threat has emerged in the process, and that being Nagor the God Butcher, who tried to slaughter all the gods to avenge his daughter's death, as well as meeting back with Jane Foster, who became worthy of Mjolnir herself, and offer her help to Thor in order to defeat Gore, as well as to save the universe. Thankfully, they managed to succeed, and Gore ultimately redeemed himself in the end and brought back his daughter, while Jane eventually died due to cancer, and Thor adopted Gore's daughter, Love, and raised, him, and raised her as his own daughter, finally starting a new life in the process. So in the end, who is Thor? He is nothing more but a very powerful being who grown up into an environment full of love, but also spoiling, 
A being that will eventually find out on the hard way about the true way of life and to grow up into a better and more responsible person. A person that will use his powers for good and to help the older people and everyone around him. A person that could easily be called as one of the most iconic superheroes in cinematic history. Thank you all for joining this new episode in today's analysis. I hope everybody enjoyed. Please don't forget to give a like and subscribe everyone and have a nice day and happy Easter. Classic. Oh, still hate it? It's humiliating. No, not for me, it's not. <laughs>